I joined Dr. Desmond Lane, South Carolina's state fruit specialist, to discuss one of our tastiest fruits. You know, we hear about Georgia to our west being considered the peach state, but I'll tell you, you know, this is, a, this is the main thing I see all my life here in South Carolina. I have a tough time not counting South Carolina as the peach state. We do consider South Carolina the peach state. In fact, South Carolina is actually the tastier peach state. <laughs> I hear you. How economically important are they in South Carolina? Well, it's about a $50 million industry. Wow. And it employs several thousand people. So we're actually the number two peach producer in the United States. Uh, many large family farms in the state. It's a very important industry. Most important fruit crop. In, in our state? Yes, it is. Where are peaches come from? Well, originally they came from China. Oh, so not from the United States. They're not from the United States. They were introduced here in the late 1500s by the Spaniards. Um, and in fact, it wasn't till about the 1850s that they were being grown on a large commercial scale. So they're originally from China. Are they something that is an old species or is it something well, that's relatively new? Actually, they've been cultivating peaches in China for about 4,000 years. And so they have been selecting peaches throughout the centuries that will perform well under their climate. And what we're doing here is, is something very similar. We've got about 350 different varieties that we're testing to see how well they'll do in South Carolina so that our growers can be successful and make good, good profit. You got a couple picked for us to take a look at? I do, we've got several boxes of peaches that come ripe at this time of the year. All right, well, let's go take a look. Yeah, let's check them out. You know, people have been selecting peaches for thousands of years, and what we've got here are an example of some that are grown here in South Carolina, or we're at least testing here at the Musser Fruit Farm, that are quite different. How are these peaches different from peaches you would see in the wild? Well, in, in the wild, typically peaches are going to be small. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a green skin. There's going to be maybe a half inch of flesh around the stone. They're not going to be big and, and fleshy like these are. So they're not going to look like that at all? No, they're not going to look like this at all. And you can see here, you know, you've got You've got nice juicy yellow flesh with a little bit of uh, red pigmentation in there. So all these things that we see here are, are a product of man-made selection. That you know, is correct. We wouldn't have these here if we didn't, if, if we hadn't brought them in and artificially modified them in order to, to make them so they're so tasty. That's exactly right. And then we get from these white flesh peaches over here, this is a nectarine, which is basically a fuzzless peach. These ones are a little bit small, but it does not have fuzz and that's a genetic trait. So a nectarine and a peach are, they, are essentially the same thing. They are thing. the same genetically, except for that change in the fact fuzz that they the don't outside. have fuzz. I gotcha. And then we got something weird at the end over there. Yeah, what What's in the world like? is this? This doesn't even look like a peach. <laughs> Looks like somebody stepped on it. It does. It's a donut peach. There's a common name, but it's called a, a peen tau. It's from China, and peen means flat, uh -huh. and tau means peach. I got gotcha. you. So it's a peen tau. So all these different peach cultivars, and I guess one of the things that's important is that all of these have been selected for the qualities that they have. That's exactly right. So somebody would have been a breeder, and they would have been looking for traits that would be desirable for a consumer. So good size, good color, good flavor, uh, that the tree would produce a lot of fruit year after year consistently. Uh, those are the main types of things that um, peach breeders would be looking for. You want to see what these guys look like on the inside? Yeah, let's take a look. All right, this is a typical California peach. It's called Crimson Lady. It's got the real strong red flesh, or red skin, I should say. Nice yellow flesh like yeah, that. Yeah, that looks good. And then this one here, this is Sugar May, and it's a white flesh peach, and it's different. You can see on the inside as we get it cut open here. Well, look at that. And look at that. You've got... This is yellow, and this is white, and it actually has some pigmentation in the flesh. This red, these are anthocyanin pigments. They're actually the same pigments that are in the skin, uh -huh. and they're very healthy for you. They've got a lot of good antioxidant uh, capacity. So you have, a lot of, uh, you have a lot of variation, not only in terms of peach size and shape, but also in terms of the color and the texture and even the taste. That's exactly right. So these peaches, they wouldn't survive in the wild, would they? Probably not. In fact, where we see orchards even in South Carolina that have been abandoned for one reason or another, the trees live maybe 15 years and then they die. Wow. So what percentage of peaches in the United States are, 
a product of artificial selection? All of them. All of them? Yeah. So just like, just as we're dependent on peaches for our economy, I guess they're dependent on us now in order for them for themselves to survive. We have to take care of them. That's, That's right. exactly right. I got you. It's just amazing to see that artificial selection has led to something as bizarre as this very oddly shaped peach. Well, Dr. Lane, I appreciate you joining me today. Must have a tough time working with these uh, tasty peaches. Well, I make, make lots of friends in the summertime, and I'm glad to make a new one today. Me too. Me too. I appreciate it. <laughs>